You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May 18th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where the reason people won't come on our show is that what we're doing right now is extremely unfair. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. We are, we are extremely unfair on this show. Extremely unfair. We remember things and we say them out loud. And that makes people very uncomfortable, and they won't come on our show if we do stuff like that. Well, and we should tell the backstory of this. This has happened this morning. It's Friday, uh, May 18th, Mm -hmm. and Rudy Giuliani lost his damn mind, or what was left of it, on the Chris Cuomo show. He did. Because Chris Cuomo not only remembered the past, he had what we call a video archive. Yes, which, yes. by the way, we have over at Crooks and Liars, too. We have a searchable video archive, yes. which is yes, so helpful. That's so, it. so helpful. So, uh, yeah, and it, and it's not like YouTube where they get taken down every once in a while. No. We just keep them up there. So, uh, yeah, Rudy got shown a video of himself saying stuff about presidents and subpoenas back yeah. when a Democrat was president, Bill yeah. Clinton. And, oh, of course— the president has to acknowledge a subpoena and answer a subpoena. Of course he does. And, uh, you know, the, the double standard continues because Rudy mm-hmm. Giuliani is there to throw Jello at the wall. That's right. absolutely what he's supposed to do. Yep. And the people that are listening to him and deriving comfort from that Jello, oh, Jello, oh, so good, oh, so um, <laughs> don't know the difference between a subpoena and indictment. A, a questioning, an interview, yeah. uh, being subject to an investigation, being the target of an investigation no. or anything. They just know Mueller, witch hunt, bad. Conspiracy, <laughs> deep state, deep state conspiracy. Everybody knows that. Right, right. So when, when Rudy Giuliani, uh, who is who is really is, has lost his mind. I mean, yeah. you, yep. you, you hired a loudmouth uh, racist asshole to be the spokesperson for a loudmouth racist asshole, both of whom are senile. Right. Um, Slightly and, senile, at least, yes. And getting yes. much worse as the more the spotlight focuses on Rudy's brain, the more his brain shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until it becomes just this shouty machine. So it was hilarious, and it really was. The last time I saw this happen, and this is this is actually one of the, the larger points I want us to talk about. Is the last time I saw this happen was um, Gloria Borger, mm-hmm. Dick Cheney, yes. And yes. she quoted him back to himself saying, it's been pretty well confirmed. You said it's been – he said, no, I never said that. No, I never said that. That's, we have a video of you I saying that. that. Yeah. No, she didn't. Yeah. She didn't oh, say she that. Didn't, she did oh, not say that. that. No. She just looked aghast and moved on. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got to have the liberal, video. You got to have the video. A bunch of liberals, you know, pull the video immediately and put it up immediately. But by that time, of course, you know, the world he was had moved out on. out of the green room and in the limo and on his way. Yeah. But, yeah. but here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Chris Cuomo unleashed the liberal superpower. Yes. Which is yes. memory. Memory. Awful evil memory on Rudy and what, Giuliani. And what makes this podcastable, as we call it, hashtag yes. podcastable in our house is a big deal, mm-hmm. uh, is... The first words out of Rudy Giuliani's mouth when he was confronted with a video of himself from a previous era. Saying exactly the opposite of what he was saying now with with equal, complete confidence that he was right and there was no discussing it. Yep. And so what Rudy Giuliani said was, no wonder no one comes on your show. That's right. That's right. Because this is entirely transactional. It is. You behave yourself and don't bring up the past and don't call me, don't prove to the audience that I am complicit and or lying or just living up to a double standard, right? right? Don't call me out on previous things I've said and I will answer your calls and come on your show and you can... I can be in your Rolodex and I'll provide content. And that's why virtually every cable TV show 
and and every frankly Sunday morning serious political show, especially Absolutely. meet the fucking press, should come with a tag that says for entertainment purposes only. Yep. Because Chuck Todd has said in interviews on the radio that yeah, I know they're lying, but I, I'm not going to call them out on it. I'm not going to say anything because then they won't come back on my show. My they job won't come is to on make my numbers. show. Yeah. My job isn't to make news; it's to make numbers, to make ratings. That's my job. So if I clap too hard at them, if I growl too hard at them, they won't come back on my show. And that is the bigger story. This, because think about it. This is all Chris Cuomo did was steal uh, John Stewart's bit. Exactly. It, literally all he did was, here's the video of you saying exactly the opposite of what you just said. What do you think? So it's not like it's rocket science. It's not incredibly challenging to do this. This is what liberals have been doing for, for since there have been videos, since Crooks and Liars started mm -hmm. storing video. Was mm -hmm. here's what you said yesterday. Here's what you said today. Please comment. And I've been doing it for David Brooks for 13 years. And right. the answer is always, I'm not going to engage with anyone who will do that with me under any circumstances. It's the and Davis Brooks rule. Here's the thing you said yesterday. I don't think I ever wrote that. Next question, please. Yeah. And I'm not going to engage. My job depends on me surfing this wave of bullshit all the way mm -hmm. to the end. And if you go back a day or two or a month or a year and start talking about shit I said then, I'll look bad and everyone around me will look bad because we're all in on the same conspiracy. Mm -hmm. So we all agree never to do this shit. But here's the point. The tactic of simply quoting back to Republicans the bullshit that they said yesterday is so devastatingly effective mm -hmm. and so rarely used that I yes. think the absence of its use is the story. It's a story. Absolutely. It's, it is clearly a decision made by uh, CBS and NBC and ABC and, and MSNBC and CNN to just as a rule, never, ever quote someone back to themselves, except right. in this case, Giuliani is so far out of the batshit tree. And it's such a big, fat, sweet pitch right over. Cause he said, I would never, I didn't say no one ever said that's crazy. No one would ever, ever, ever. Well, yes, she did. No, I didn't. I never said any such thing. I never. And then you hit him with a videotape. Mm -hmm. and, and again, his reaction was not, you got me. His reaction was not, I'm, I was wrong. It was, this is why people don't come on your show. There is a difference if someone says, you got me, or I was wrong. Yes. Or And even if Rudy Giuliani says, no, I think I was wrong. I think Bill Clinton was railroaded into right. yeah. an impeachment which was completely unfair yeah. and Donald Trump's being treated the same way. Hey, at least that's a logical statement to make. Right. Mm -hmm. But to have two completely different standards yep. for Democrats and Republicans is what he got called out on. And he won't admit that. And, he, and, and it's, yeah. and you and I have seen this locally. It's this, you cheated. You yeah. cheated. You're yeah. not supposed to mention the fact that we have two governors, a Republican and a Democrat who were in prison. What I only want to talk about the, the Democrat. Right. You're not supposed to talk about Bill Clinton's impeachment when I'm railing on about how no Democrat would ever be treated this way if they were president. Right, um, right. When you know right. that's bullshit because you have blotted that out of your memory. You have erased your own, your own past, your own memory. You have consciously uh, lobotomized yourself mm -hmm. to be un, un, you know, inconvenienced and untroubled by any thoughts that conflict with what you want to believe today. And when someone brings up the shit you said yesterday or a week ago or a month ago and puts it in your face – to you, that's cheating because that's not how we play this game. Well, saying saying that I was wrong mm -hmm. is such a terribly hard thing for a lot of people to say. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just reminded of, you know, in this past month, Joanne Reed. Yes. Having to talk about the fact that she said some things that were hurtful and were wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this up now. I know we have these advertisers. Sure, sure. Stopping sure. at the bit. But yeah. uh, Michelle Bachman. Yes. Made. I'm in a totally inappropriate location, but you know, this, this moving the embassy to Jerusalem was just, it was this week. It's hard to believe it was this week yeah. with the shooting we have this morning and the, the pace of news. Yeah, people but, aren't uh, flicking enough matches at enough powder kegs around the world. Seriously. So let's, let's a few, seriously. And, and the number of people that died at the border while, you know, miss a spokesmodel for the Trump administration, Ivanka was, being, <laughs> I love, I did love the line, uh, Marie Antoinette, right? Zionist yeah. Marie Antoinette. Okay, but I'm getting off track. Uh, Michelle Bachman. Michelle Bachman apologized for saying in the past that 
uh, Jews needed to convert to Christianity to hasten the second coming of Christ. She said something along those lines. She did. And the apology that she gave was a real apology, a real, genuine, I was wrong. I said something that was hurtful. I own that I said it, and I'm sorry. Right. And sh- and if you go over to Right Wing Watch, you'll find that the uh, right wing preachers that are nailing her mm-hmm. for saying that and for denying Christ and for denying the second coming and for mm-hmm. not being a real Christian and, you know, just calling her out for betraying the faith. She's getting ra- raked for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was and and like I say, the the she was in Israel for the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem. Mm hmm. Which is also supposed to be some harbinger of, you know, it's going to it's going to hurry along the rapture and all of us are going to go to heaven and you're not. That's why Hagee and and Jeffries and those awful right wing preachers were Fake there. Christians. And, and Hagee, let's remember, Hagee has been saying this for years, that, that yep. to, to get to heaven, you need to build a bridge of bones out of the Jews who refuse to convert. And, and if one acre of land is given away from Israel in a pursuit of peace... Mm-hmm. Uh, God will rain down terrorism on the United States and, of America. And who was James Hagee's good buddy? Joe fucking Lieberman. Yep. Joe Lieberman, yep. who likened him to Moses, who called him a mensch, who were yep. – because because he supports Israel. Well, and, and it's it's the same way with Jeffries yep. tweeting a picture of himself with his new friend Alan Dershowitz. Yeah, no, you don't support Israel. You support the uh, Netanyahu – right-wing Likud version of right. Israel. And, and there's a it, whole lot of Israelis, but speaking as a Brandeis graduate and a good friend of a number of people who are have dual citizenship with Israel, uh-huh. there's a whole lot of Israelis that think American policy is just nuts. Yeah, okay, it is, because it's all based on creation myth bullshit right, about exactly. the second coming and where the plains of Megiddo and the rapture And who is going right. to go to heaven and who right. isn't. And a very isolationist, exclusivist uh, sense of who is saved and who is not. And it is not friendly to the Jews. You know who's going to go to heaven, Blue Gal? Anyone who sponsors this show. (laughs) Okay, that's great. For example. (laughs) We've got some old fake fake sponsors. Our old fake sponsors are back for a little return visit. Dukakis khakis, of course. Michael Dukakis' line of sensible men's pants. Dukakis khakis. They're not good for running it. Um, Crock blockers. The bad fashion choice alert system from your friends here at the Cornfield uh, Cornfield Enterprises. Croc blockers. Hey, man, don't wear those shoes. And the perfect snack while you're wearing your Dukakis khakis and you're wearing your Croc blockers is, of course, our original sponsor, McGuffin's Muffins. McGuffin's Muffins, building strong plot points 12 ways. Do you want to go with the last one, darling? Oh, sure. Well, it's for that special someone on their special day. It's not too late to send Triffitt's flowers for Mother's Day ever. Or? Uh, <laughs> the occasion uh, of the occasion of the one year anniversary of a certain investigation. You could yes, send Triffitt's flowers. Delivery is free, but you won't like it. But you won't. You won't like it. You, you really won't like, won't like it. it. And I think you should wear Dukakis khakis when you're delivering those uh, Triffitt's flowers because they're sensible pants for senseless times. I want to confess, since we're talking about when we're wrong, um, mm-hmm. you know, we believe in the Enlightenment. We believe in the scientific method. We believe in taking your theory and putting it to the test. And if you're wrong, you you own up and you say, you know what? That was wrong. Uh, apparently, two objects dropped in a vacuum do fall at the same rate. Um, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. And the sun, uh, in fact, uh, does not go around the Earth. It's the other way around. So I predicted uh, last week that Hugh Hewitt would only get a slap on the wrist from the Washington Post and from the MSNBC for using his position to curry favor with Scott Pruitt and the EPA and steer business and steer special funding to a special friend of his, because that is completely unethical, utterly wrong, doing it. Uh, MSNBC has has uh, suspended people for giving $1,000 to campaigns before. So right. obviously Hewitt would get at least a slap on the wrist, but I was wrong. I, I'm man enough to admit I was wrong. Uh, they did nothing at all. Nothing whatsoever. Hugh Hewitt instead. They had him on Meet the Press Daily. Yeah. Instead, he was invited as, a, as an honored guest on the Chuck Todd show, uh, onto a conservative puppet show. Uh, no one mentioned his giant ethical lapse. 
No one did a thing. And it was him and Charlie Sykes talking about conservatism and conservatism and conservatism, which uh, is is another topic of ours, the erasing of liberals. That's mm-hmm. that's the spectrum of opinion you can expect to see in the future if we don't stop it. On the left, Charlie Sykes. On the right, Hugh Hewitt. In the middle, Chuck Todd going, I love this. I should have – you guys should have your own show. <laughs> um, while, of course, Chuck Todd being the uh, – suck up hack corporate douchebag that he is refuses to mention the massive ethical lapse that his good friend Hugh Hewitt committed because they are all uh, followers of the Gingrich rules. The Gingrich right. rules did not go out of, out of date when Newt Gingrich moved on to bigger and better things being the layabout man of the Vatican. No, no, no. The Gingrich rules are still here. The Gingrich rules are very specifically when a conservative shits the bed mightily and publicly, it is the job Uh, It used to be David Gregory, uh, Mm -hmm. but Chuck Todd now has that job of immediately rehabilitating their public uh, profile by bringing them on his show, giving them a place of prominence, letting them do what they do best, and never, ever fucking mentioning the horrible, evil, rancid shit that they just did in public because that would, you know, make them look bad. So you rehabilitate, you know, you're rehabbing old furniture, you're you're giving them a, a tuck and roll, as they used to say in the auto business. And putting them right back out on the showroom floor. And that's what Chuck Todd did this week for his good friend, uh, Charlie Sykes, who blocks me, and Hugh Hewitt, who just thinks I'm insane. And Hugh Hewitt, who also clearly, uh, his career depends on believing in the David Brooks Republican Party. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Yes. He's convinced that what we need to do, no one's going to fire Mueller. Nothing's going to happen to Mueller or Rosenstein. They're both protected. That would be terrible. And uh, there's been, you know, they've buried the lead a little bit. What Rudy Giuliani has really done is guaranteed the president that he will not be indicted. Mm -hmm. There's a guarantee written out there. Guarantee. And (laughs) And, and it's as good as Giuliani's word, which we know. Exactly. Exactly. It's as good as Giuliani's word. And uh, we're burying the lead on that one. But, you know, he's never going to be indicted. On the other hand, uh, Mueller's not going to be fired. And that's the grand bargain that we have. Right. Mueller's not going to be fired. Trump's not going to be indicted. And that's all settled now. And so we'll just wait for the report to come from Mueller. And it should go to someone like Chuck Grassley. Mm-hmm. We, you know, don't do anything. Don't indict the president. Don't make any waves like that. No. Just Write up a little report mm-hmm. and give it to Chuck Grassley. Right. We'll make a lovely floral <laughs> arrangement out of it. And we'll all dance around it and go, my, isn't that interesting for a while? And then well, we'll and because on. the point is, the point of this, and this is Chuck Todd's number one worry on this debate between the mm-hmm. two of them, uh, Charlie Sykes, as a substitute liberal, which is, you know, the only quote is, unquote liberal you're allowed to have on TV is Charlie Sykes. Is, is the former Rush Limbaugh of Wisconsin. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But he. He's transformed himself now yes. and forgetting the past into uh, what passes for liberal commentary. Uh-huh. And as such, he makes a lot of sense in that he says, look, Nixon would survive Watergate with this media uh, protection that he's getting both from Fox and from the Republican House. You know, there is interference being run for Donald Trump by congressmen. Right. And because of Nixon would survive Watergate with this because Congress is so complicit. That wasn't the case in 1974. Uh, But the fact that uh, Hugh Hewitt then says, you know, there's this grand bargain. It's not it's going to work out. And once this little report is delivered, if there's real evidence, Republicans will just dump. They'll do the right right thing. Blue gal, because Republicans always do the right thing. Always right on them to do the right thing. Um, if they're drowning and there's a, an inch of air above them, uh, you can count on them to finally, finally, finally punch through the ice um, and, and get out <laughs> somehow. Because like any other rats on a sinking ship, they will find a way off the ship. The, sh- the, the, raft, sure. the, the way they will get off is by building little rafts shaped like Charlie Sykes and Hugh Hewitt. And row frantically away from the disaster they created. Painted with the word Trumpism, Trumpism across it's the Trumpism. Front. We're, we're not, it's not Republicans, it's Trumpism. No. So, as, and that, this is why I said to you, and I want to get back yeah. to this, why I will never want to be on television. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because it's an addiction. Uh-huh. And former Blaze employee from the Blaze, <laughs> yeah. Amy Holmes. Yes. I mean, this is, I'm t- I, I said this to Drip Glass before we recorded, that 
This is a Dagwood sandwich of shit. Okay. I'm to prepare yourselves, listeners. It's Amy Holmes, formerly of the Blaze, talking to the mortal remains, um, Larry King, on RT Britain. Yeah. Russia Today Britain, where Larry King now has a show called Poli Ticking. Yeah. Like the ticking time bomb of politics. Yes. Politicking. And Amy Holmes is asked about young Republicans. So tell me, uh, Larry King says, uh, uh, lo- young Republicans are polling like they don't like Trump so much. Well, well. Uh, young Republicans, yeah, that's kind of a complicated relationship because we kind of have to figure out what Trumpism is because it's not really, it's a flamboyant style of governing, but it's not really what Republican yeah, is. Yeah, it really is, Amy. It really and and it really is, Amy, because Donald Trump got more Republican primary votes than any candidate in history. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, the C- Republican Congress is utterly and completely complicit with everything Donald Trump is doing. Mm-hmm. And number three, the Republican National Committee is completely in the tank for reelecting Donald Trump and has mm-hmm. canceled any plans for any primary debates. That committee no longer exists. And they're going full four with Trump 2020 because an incumbent president is worth a wait, right? That's it. Oh, yeah. But Larry King's on TV forever. So anybody can go on Larry King. Uh, on the subject of liberals being erased from the conversation. There you go. And, and this, is, this falls under the predictions. I have a, I'm starting a series on my blog called Drift Class versus Spectrum because Spectrum is the new spectrum of acceptable political opinion on the public airwaves or on cable. And and by God, I turn on to, on to PBS, and what do I see? I see Amy Holmes and Michael fucking Gerson. Yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. liberal there at all. They're just, and it's called in principle, and they're going to be principled, decent people. And I want to bring that back to today by pointing out that Michael Gerson had another massive Republican detachment column in the Washington Post, where he is, for some reason, still paid to write. And he, like Charlie Sykes, is, is clearly appropriating liberal critique of the Republican Party. But his entire predicate is always the same, which is this all started two years ago. Yep. Uh, this is the worst environment, but it all started with Trump. Why, well, back when Bill Buckley, I, I used to, he used to dandle me on his knee and, and entertain me stories of, of Edmund Burke. And he was a great man. He got rid of all the racists in the Republican Party. Suddenly, two years ago, they all reappeared. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and, and here's the problem with that. It's all bullshit. And Michael Gerson is either completely a uh, complete moron, which he's not, or he's just another fucking liar. Like Charlie Sykes, he's just a liar. He cannot face the fact, he cannot apologize, he can't atone for, he can't even acknowledge that his Republican Party really was this bad long before Trump showed up because that would put him in the trick bag. That would make him complicit and Chuck Todd complicit and David Gregory complicit and everyone who has conspired to look the other way for so goddamn long that Donald Trump became inevitable would have to go to media jail. And they don't want to go to media jail. They want to go on Larry King. They want to go on the Chuck Todd show. They want to go on TV. They're addicted to being on television. Yeah. They really are. And I will only add to that. And so I wrote a long post about that that I won't bore you with. But I want to add one more thing that's not in our notes. Just just as a a little little soup song, a little cherry on the top of this. Uh, As you might know, I have a long-running series called Matthew Dowd is a Fundamentally Ridiculous Person. (laughs) Yes. And, And I got a whole bunch of incoming tweets and emails going, dude. Dude, now Matthew Dad blocked me a year ago, a year and a half ago, for pointing out that the both siderism that he traffics in is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the thing, and I want you to hold that in your mind. Um, that I got blocked by Matthew, Dad, and he personally insulted my readers. He did. My readers went over there and said, "Why aren't you reading Drift Glass?" And he said things like, "Anyone who reads Drift Glass doesn't really respect the truth. I don't read fiction because he's a whiny little bitch." who has a job on TV for which he is wildly underqualified. And he doesn't want to talk about the fact that he gets it wrong all the time, every time. And that he is a windsock. He blows with the prevailing wind. So the prevailing wind is suddenly from the, holy shit, Donald Trump is terrible. So suddenly, Matthew Dowd yesterday on the Twitter machine very boldly announced that, I've said this for nearly two years. We in the media press job should not be balanced. It should be the pursuit of the truth. If people being interviewed do not consistently tell the truth, we should not be giving them a platform. We (laughs) should be biased towards the truth. End of story. Mm -hmm. Which is 
which is staggering. That's horseshit. Matthew Dowd's whole career, him and Ron Fournier, you know, Tweedledum and Tweedledumber, were all about all they did for years was sit on a TV set going, both sides, both sides, the corrupt duopoly is the problem. Sure, yeah, Donald Trump is horrible, but what about those emails? Yeah, Donald Trump uh, has this porn star problem. What about those emails? You know, and it was just, it was obsessive with them because that's what got them paid. And then now the wind has shifted. And now Matthew Dowd is writing like I wrote. And I'm still blocked from him. He's, he can't acknowledge that he was so freaked out by being called out to be a liar by mm-hmm. some nobody blogger in the middle of Illinois. This mm-hmm. is the, this is mm-hmm. ABC News. And, and chief... people that quote you to him. Bl- you're you're, you're Bl- known well enough that people come up to him and say, yeah. you know, Drift Glass is right about you. <laughs> and now this is remember, this is the guy who is ABC News chief political analyst. This yeah. is his only job. And now he wants a fucking lollipop and a pat on the head for saying exactly what we've been saying for 25 years. Drift Glass, I wonder if one of the reasons that he sort of found God this week in that uh-huh. regard is Rex Tillerson's speech. Well, you know, Rex Tillerson moved a lot of people closer to God this week, Blue Gal. <laughs> he sure did. He at, sure at a, at a sure commencement did. address yeah. at a military academy, Virginia Military Academy, mm-hmm. where he said, truth. Truth matters. Yes. Uh, if we're going to be wobbly about truth, we're being wobbly about America. And yes. there are facts. There are undeniable facts, and you better get on the right side of them. Mm-hmm. And Says, uh, it was not at all uh, subtle no. <laughs> in well, terms the, of pointing right at his former employer, yeah, Donald the Trump. Who, the guy who didn't hold a press conference for a year. You know, right, who exactly. Kept the press exactly. But suddenly he's dressed up in the miter and the robe going, Twoof! Twoof is what wakes us to Gabba today. And he gets, wants to give a fucking sermon on how important truth is and how important facts are. I'm like, is is anyone else seeing this? Because I feel like I'm having some sort of episode here because I distinctly remember you being one of the lying assholes who wouldn't tell the truth because you you had your mouth firmly wrapped around Donald Trump's scrotum. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. that you're free of that, you are free to go off and not really specify who you're talking about. But, you know, generally speaking, truth is a good thing and having credibility is a good thing. And maybe we should think about doing that. Well, anyway. I think that was his coping mechanism for not wanting to lie to the media was I yeah. just won't talk to them. Right. So and that'll be my my you know, I'm I'm former head of Exxon. I don't have to talk to anybody. Right. I, 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 when and, I quit this job, I'm going to be a billionaire anyway. So you right. know, what is it? Matter? The seat is warm for me at Exxon Mobil, no matter yeah. what I do. And nobody puts Mrs. Greenspan in a corner and yeah. lives to tell the tale. Yeah, she she was the first one out of the gate mm-hmm. with, you never held a press conference. You pushed me away. You walked away from me. Yeah. Nobody puts me in a corner and then comes on, on a, a commencement address and starts talking about love for truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she uh, went uh, fully Glenn Close. You're not going to ignore me. You and I watched Tina Fey being interviewed by David Letterman this week. We watched Tina Fey being uh, very dismissive of David Letterman's misogyny yes. in the nicest way possible. Nicest way. It was really good. Uh, I got to say, I was a brilliant man because I married someone just like Tina Fey. Oh, Smart for and sakes. funny and, you know, blah, 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 blah. so oh, for th- this sakes. is all about me, Blue Gal. So why don't you talk about me <laughs> some more? But talk about how brilliant you were to to marry a smart, funny woman. OK, <laughs> well, I did. I just thought it was a great interview because she did masterfully whip down the idea that women might not want to write comedy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whether women would want to write for my show. You know, I'm on at 12. Tw- I was on at 1225 at night. Late at night you know. <laughs> and she just looked right at him and said, yes, they want to write for your show. <laughs> And and again, denial of history. Meryl Marco wrote for his show and slept with him, right. and and he was a douchebag in terms of women. You know, making jokes about women. I I wouldn't say he was guilty of sexual harassment or part of the Me Too movement or anything. I'm not making any charges against him, mm-hmm. but uh, he was he was a old fart of a guy boss that every woman who's ever worked in a in an old fart guy boss environment would recognize. Mm-hmm. Who knows if a woman would ever want to write for my, my show? God. 
and well, and what she said, and she very again, ma- very masterfully said, "No, Dave, yep. no, yeah, you want right. to work for your show. They wanted to work for your show. Yeah. We want to achieve that level of professionalism." But in she our also lives. really yeah. very elegantly shifted the conversation over to when you change the mix in the room. You cheat mm-hmm. the environment, even if the writers on SNL when she was there, because they would shoot down her ideas all the time, which were funny. And she said, "I don't yep. want to. I don't want to attribute to them any kind of ignorance or misogyny. There's just some shit that you know, twenty five year old guys don't find funny that is hilarious." Yeah, they had they had one wedge of the pie of what is funny, and the human experience is funny. And as you bring mm-hmm. Asians and African Americans and women and the disabled and all kinds of people into the mix, you get a better product. That is true in every aspect of life. Yes. But especially yes. anything to do with communication, like comedy, it's better. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. Was highly recommended. Uh, it is David Letterman's show, My Next Guest Needs No Introduction on Netflix. It is the uh, Tina Fey interview, and it's very, very good. Uh, all right. Where are we, Drift Glass? What do you want to do next? I'd let you talk a little bit about – we were on a, a massive commute yesterday. We went up uh, far, far, far to the north of Illinois to pick up Junior Dude and bring him home. Um, so, Are, you, are we going to talk about Michael Smirkanish? W- well, we probably are uh, because <laughs> I, what I wanted to mention was we, we our podcast is basically a slice of a regular conversation we're having all right. the time. We talk about a lot of other things. And certainly while we're on a three-and-a-half-hour car trip to go get our – oldest yeah. child from college yeah. for the and year. the turnaround yeah. for three and a half hour the podcasting <laughs> um it's it's a it's a long day but what we do is we listen to yeah. books on tape or we listen to you know classic vintage radio which was awesome i can rec- highly recommend uh hop along cassidy uh with william conrad <laughs> kicked yeah. ass i mean there's some very good writing going on in, in classic radio all brought to you by armed forces radio which i thought was hilarious but we also talk about politics because mm-hmm. politics is you know one of the things that we're interested in and that we, we spend a lot of time on and we chatted yesterday on the way up about the whole this this ludicrous idea of Democrats in disarray. Mm-hmm. The perennial story that Democrats in disarray. What do Democrats believe? And I, I'm bringing Chuck Todd here, not an exact quote, but sort of the mentality of that sort of person. Oh, he's done. Is, he's done a, a segment on this on every show this oh, week. Yeah. But yep. it really is. You know, if you can't shrinky dink the entire Democratic Party down to one sentence, mm-hmm. then Democrats have no ideas. And Democrats yeah. are just interested in Trump and anti-Trump, et cetera. And they just want to polish. I've heard this before more than once in the last two weeks. They just want to polish their – they just want to polish their anti-Trump bona fides by talking about impeachment. First of all, every Democrat I know is talking about health care or education, and Trump mm-hmm. doesn't enter into it. it. It's part of the conversation. Secondly, this whole idea that you have to polish up your, your anti-Trump bona fides by pointing out that this corrupt, racist criminal should be – held to account for his crimes is somehow just a political stance that Democrats are adopting that have nothing to do with the inherent virtue of taking that position because Chuck Todd doesn't understand right. ethics. He understands yeah. team play. He understands red ants and black ants. So anything Democrats are doing must be some sort of political angle they're playing. Uh, anyway, it's all bullshit. But if you shrink it down to one sentence, like, okay, the Democrats are for health care. What about education? You know, it's it's there's there's never a right answer for these people because the narrative that they're sworn to to push at all costs is Democrats are disarray, but they're not. My wife has a T-shirt that shows every Democratic policy that she wore yesterday. I'm wearing it right now. It's it's the o- Obama um, store mm-hmm. T-shirt from the Obama era. It says climate change, economic opportunity, gun violence protection, a uh, prevention. That's very. Excuse me, I'll say it again. Gun violence prevention. Uh-huh. That's very timely. Yes. Healthcare, immigration reform. Yeah. Uh, marriage equality and women's rights. And I wore I wear that today to say there's all kinds of things that Democrats stand for, have stood for, have evolved on, have come to, right. uh, uh, have adopted. And these are policies. And the fact that Donald Trump's policies are are in direct opposition to humanity is the reason I'm a Democrat. <laughs> Doesn't mean that my whole policy is just hating Trump. No, but but his policies from the Iran deal right. to the bike share program at the White House, Donald Trump's policy is undo everything Obama right. did. That's it. So, no, we actually have interesting 
complicated policy debates. Yep. And the the other side are a bunch of thugs and racists who just say, undo, Obama bad. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. literally all they believe. And the idea that people who occupy chairs and uh, panels on network television mm-hmm. and say, well, on the one side, you know, you have opposition, but the other side, you have the opposition, the opposition. So really, it's just both sides. Both sides are so loud and cranky. No, Democrats are not in disarray. Here's what's going on in the Democratic Party. And this is an actual story that any reporter could be reporting on. Right. Very much like any reporter could be holding a videotape of someone lying and saying, but you just said that and you just said the opposite. (laughs) The truth is the Republican Party does not believe in government, period. They believe in destroying the government, getting rid of the government, Mm -hmm. gutting the government, Mm -hmm. deregulating the fuck out of everything, cutting taxes for rich people down to zero and letting everything be run by theocrats and oligarchs and and uh, uh, Pluto and corporations, and corporations. Yep. That's it. That is their Private philosophy. Time. That's yep. why, um, as I, I mentioned on, on, in a post I'm writing, uh, from the day that Paul Ryan emerged, still shiny with the albumen from his Koch brothers' crash, <laughs> to the day he to the day he departs Congress in disgrace, he has only believed one thing, and that is the the federal government should be destroyed. Mm-hmm. And he will all there will always be money for people who believe that. There will always yeah. be a lot of money for people who believe that. But that's the problem. If your entire political party predicate is must destroy government, starting with the poorest and weakest and and least able to defend themselves, and that you you sell your soul, you literally burn out the part of you that has any compassion or humanity to adopt that position, then anyone who's interested in doing anything to help people using government has no place to go except the Democratic Party. There is no other. And that's a very big tent full of lots of different opinions. Because there's, there's right? no place else to go. There's, right. and, and that's right. I think that's a very good thing. The Democratic Party, as we've said before on the show, represents the entire spectrum of responsible adult debate over policy issues. And you can have Bernie on one side and Hillary on the other, or whatever two polls you want. But we're having grown-up adult conversations about about what we should do about health care. Should we have single payer? Should we have a government option? Should we have Medicare for all? But we're not saying exactly. dump everybody off off uh, off Obamacare, let them all die. We're not saying Well, and I think there Chuck Todd wants it to be that if Nancy Pelosi is reelected right. speaker of the House, after a humongous blue wave takes back the House of Representatives, which it's clear that the writing on the wall is that barring some tremendous shift in the electorate, that's what's going to happen. Yes. The story then has to be Democrats are miserable because Nancy Pelosi was reelected speaker. Right. That has and to be, that, yeah. my my opinion on that, my personal opinion as an average Democratic voter is it's time for some new blood. It's yes. time for a, a change of leadership. It's time to reward younger people and bring them in and bring them into leadership and groom them for leadership and not have septuagenarians across the top of the, you know, the, the leadership of our party. That's right. just and that's true in the Republican Party as well. I just feel like one generation is clinging for dear life to all of the leadership positions in government. And that's harmful. Yes. If, as is likely, Nancy Pelosi is elected speaker, I'm not going to cut my wrists and tell everyone I'm not a Democrat no. anymore. No. <laughs> it's not that important, first of all. And uh, yes, I would like to see change. I would like to see new leadership. But Nancy Pelosi isn't the enemy. No. As far as I'm concerned, she is part of the equation. And if you believe, if you believe that government can be used as a means to help people, mm-hmm. then you are a Democrat. Yeah, I'm going to push Nancy Pelosi or whoever else I I see as leaders within the Democratic Party to be less corporate, to get the money out of politics, to do the yes. the right thing for poor people, and not serve special uh, billionaire masters within our electorate. You know, I think. All of those things are within my right to do, but right. that doesn't make me in disarray with my party somehow no, or and, an insurgency and that I'm some sort and, of insurgent for saying that is ridiculous. No, well, and the alternative of your, your political alternative is the diametric opposite of believing that government can yes. be used to help people, exactly. not some variation of it. It is right. the diametric opposite. So right. we have now reached the place where it is black or white. 
Mm-hmm. It is your and, and I'm not saying you have to join the Democratic Party. I'm not saying Bernie has to change his party affiliation. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying that if you are out there throwing up your hand, if you're still playing Matthew Dowd 2016 going, it's the corrupt duopoly. It's both sides. <laughs> there are both sides are the same. Then you are either willfully ignorant to the point where you should have someone help you feed you or mm-hmm. you are just lying to yourself. So you hide from your moral responsibility as a citizen of this country to mm-hmm. get us and a citizen of the that. world and a citizen of the, you know, ecological planet we live on. Yeah. Yes. To get right. us out from under, because, you know, I believe it's our destiny as human beings to move out to the stars. I really mm-hmm. do believe it's our destiny a million years from now to be on 30 planets all across this part of the galaxy. I really do believe that, but we have to get past the racist orange fire demon trap first mm-hmm. to get there. Mm-hmm. And, and right now we are being, we are being very, very uh, uh, brutally tested yeah. and yeah. and asked a really important question about who we are. Yep. And if your answer is, I don't want to decide, I don't want to have to make a choice. I don't want to have to sign up. You should be looking in the faces of migrant children and the children at the Texas high school and children whose food stamps are being canceled, et cetera, et cetera. You should look at the faces of all those children and say, well, both sides are equally bad. I guess there's nothing yeah. we can do. But there is... But we've reached, and I'm not saying that Democrats don't fuck up and make mistakes and go to prison. God, I live in Illinois. We put more governors in prison than that. <laughs> believe me, I understand this. But one party is a political party, and one is a fascist front organization that has nothing but their own interests at heart and is willing to decimate this country, to loot it on behalf of their, their plutocrat uh, funders and on behalf of a foreign government. And if that doesn't scare the shit out, yep. if that doesn't make you choose, if that doesn't knock you the hell off the fence, and and if you still want to straddle it, mm-hmm. I don't know who the hell you are, but you're not you're not a citizen of my country, because my yeah. citizens of my country stand up and fight for what they have, and right now that it's being taken away from you by one of our two political parties. Period. Speaking of Mike Smirconish, do you want to talk about him for a minute? No, just the caller that he had on, okay. who was the woman who kept saying Americans should do this and yes. Americans should do that, and. Somebody needs to do X, Y, and Z. Somebody should do something about stuff that's making me sad. Yeah. 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 Great, and I just, I, and this was just, just goes back to the Tina Fey thing, because yeah. I was the one who said to you, this is a gender problem. Right. Right here. She has been taught that she is not allowed to have any opinion herself. Right. She is not allowed to use the we statement. She is not allowed to say anything, but in gen- in general, people should. And she will not take ownership of her rage to say, I believe that this is wrong, and therefore, I want this change to happen. Mm-hmm. She never used the I statement at all in her calls. No. People, uh, America, and and it was just so, it, it was a real blatantly obvious uh, problem that she had, mm-hmm. that she couldn't take ownership of her, her political anger, her opinion, her statement. But she was on the air with Michael Smirconish, <laughs> and of course, then he hung up on her and went on to both sides. Yeah. But um, Drift Glass, did you know that I, I finally looked this up this uh, statistic, and it's it's something that should sober everyone. That this is our 441st uh, show? Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big um, one, yeah. Right now, a baby boomer dies every 19.8 seconds. Really? A, U, a United States citizen baby boomer dies every 19.8 seconds, and that number is shrinking. Mm-hmm. There's an article, I think, in the Atlantic Monthly today talking about how the Republican Party has just completely doubled down on white voters over yes. 55, period. That's their base. That's who they're going to do everything to light a fire under to get them to the polls in November. It's the Republican Party's generational bet. Right. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. And and that is a bet that is not a long term bet. No, they they have no interest uh, in the. They, that's the thing. They have no yeah. interest in the long term health and 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 uh, well being of this country. Mm-hmm. They're interested in going to their graves in comfort. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if that means they have to pay a nickel more in taxes so some brown child out there can have health care, they're not going to do it because it, that's taking a nickel away from them and giving it to but, the undeserving. But I think what's I think what's happening, Drift Glass, because this this story that came out of. Uh, Louisiana uh, this month talking about how, uh, you know, eviction notices are being sent to nursing home patients. Yeah. Because they're, the Republican legislature in Louisiana wants this one cent sales tax to expire 
in June. And the one cent sales tax raises $880 million a year. And if if they lose that money, they got to cut somewhere. And the biggest place to cut is nursing homes, is Medicaid. And Medicaid is is not just for poor kids and is not for takers and moochers and people who don't want to work. It is health insurance for for nursing home patients who have run out of their own money, right. their own resources. Their house has been sold. Everything's gone. Right. Uh, and, and very often congressional representatives will recommend to patients in nursing homes that they draw down their That's income the and their wealth and sell their house to their kid or whatever. There are ways to... Now, if you do that, you, there's a certain amount that has to go to nursing home anyway. I mean, it, it, there, there are laws and rules and regulations as to how to do that. Right. But, but lots and lots of families, we would call it, if they were black people, gin the system. Right. right? We yeah. would call it that. Yeah. We don't call it that. We don't call it even – we don't even call it government funded. No, we call it the strategy for mom. No, Please we call it she paid into this her whole life, right. which she didn't. No, she didn't. And it's clear she didn't pay enough into her in her whole life into Medicaid specifically to pay for this. But it is insurance so that 85-year-old women are not on the street. Right. Uh, the, Worth every penny. The, uh, yeah, the we because this is America and we are a decent society that takes care of our elderly mm-hmm. and that's our value and that's how we should communicate. It's almost this. like Democrats have that have that as a as a message. That's one of the things Democrats believe. Seriously, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Democratic governor of Louisiana is saying mm-hmm. that is saying, look, you want to not have this one cent sales tax. You got to have special session to tell us what you're going to do about Medicaid funding because if you don't. You're talking about evicting 37,000 people. And the Medicaid uh, administrator of Louisiana went before the state legislature committee and said 60% of these patients cannot put a spoon to their mouth. Uh-huh. So you need to figure out, you know, they're bedridden and cannot put a spoon to their mouth. They cannot feed themselves. You better figure out what you're going to do because these people are going to be in the street. They're going to be dead. And what kind of a society do we want to be? Well, we don't want to have one cent sales tax. No, that's crazy. <laughs> Taxes theft, blue gal. Taxes theft. Right. It's always theft. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so for the voters of Louisiana who have been taught you oh you never vote for a Democrat because that's voting for baby killing, mm-hmm. they're having to wake up and make a make a deci- make a decision about what kind of a society do you want to have? Do you want to have a society that puts women out women elderly women mostly? out on the street because one cent sales tax is a bridge too far and all this <laughs> what a we need to get better messaging about the amount of uh abortions that obamacare has prevented yeah. from well, happening if, with ac- increased access to birth I, I control was, I, I was mean, listening to another podcast oh yeah. no yes i was one of the ones that are, have not been around nearly as long as us but are much 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 larger and that's that it's an ecosystem there's room for everyone <laughs> but the point they were making was um they got to this precipice of uh messaging and this and that and this and that but then they shrugged their shoulders and said well you know we're the liberal media yeah and we can't there's not i mean we're nothing compared to what Fox and mm-hmm. and Sinclair yeah. and Breitbart and there's just this giant pit of money, electro Republican yep. propaganda machine out mm-hmm. there, and Democrats have nothing comparable yep. to that. So we can have all the best messaging in the world, but it's not going to get past that until we take down the center, until yeah. we take down the people that enable it, and that's doable. That's very very doable. But you can't say both sides are equally bad when one side is putting grandma out. Well, on the Well, you asked about what sort of society you want, and. and, and People want a society yeah. where no one will mention that and make them feel uncomfortable. Right, exactly. That's the point where that's invisible. And that is easy to do when you're talking about poor black mothers yes. because making those people invisible is the job of mainstream media. It's not the job of mainstream media that my grandmother will not have a place to live and have someone help her put a spoon to her mouth. That's Fox News. That's personal, and that wakes people up because those are white ladies, right? Well, that's Fox. I mean, it is a racial thing. Yeah. This is a racial thing. We make government spending for white people utterly invisible. Mm-hmm. We never call it government spending. It's entitlements. It's something I've paid into my whole life. Never mind how many, how much sales tax. That one one cent sales tax is paid every time. An undocumented immigrant buys a Coca-Cola 
they're paying that tax and they're not getting anything for it. And yet, you know, it's a bridge too far because what reasons? Okay. I'm getting off my soapbox. We're reaching end time, Drift Glass. We are. And I, I don't mean that in the Jerusalem wall no. business. Our podcast is just about over. We should, because this was just a hurricane of news, but it's always a hurricane of news. So yeah. we should mention that uh, Kim Jong-un is currently playing Got Your Nose with uh, President Stupid. So is China, uh, by the way, on the yeah. trade war. Yeah. And my, in my mind, this is a fright. This is why you should not have a vivid imagination because this keeps me up at night. In my mind, Donald Trump is in the room, his pants are down, the $130,000 are on the dresser. And he's saying to China and, and North Korea, so we're we going to do this thing? And now they're just decided, like, no, 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 no. We made you take your pants off in front of the whole world. And now we're going to screw with you. Because you've bet your your entire legacy on on us being reasonable. Mm-hmm. And you've, you, you've elevated us to the world stage. You've elevated this third world butcher to a co-equal with the president of the United States. And now we're going to have some fun. Now we're going to see how much we can make you dance. And if, if Donald Trump has proven anything, during his career, he's absolutely gutless. He yep. will bend over. He won't over. fire anyone no. face to face. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. Well, he's tough on Twitter and he's willing yeah. to you know, be a badass as long as there's no consequences to him whatsoever. But the minute you get him like uh, in a jury room, get him on the stand, put a Bible in his hand, tell him he's got, he, this is going to have some consequences. He gets very, very contrite and he gets very, very quiet. And, and the inner gutless racist bully uh, coward comes pouring right out that he is on, on the inside. He's an absolute gutless human being who does lets everybody do his fighting and talking for him. And these guys uh, have been being have been bullies for centuries. <laughs> so they they're actually much better at this game than he is. Um now Rudy Giuliani continues to be amazing. Can I say something about Michael Avenatti? Yeah. Michael Avenatti I think reached the point today where he's tired of winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a Donald Trump promise that has been kept. Uh-huh. Someone is tired of winning. He called for Rudy Giuliani to retire yeah. and uh, just said, look, this is embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. You had a legacy, whatever that, you know, I'm not going to debate that now. You had a legacy uh, as America's mayor, and now you're just ruining it day by day by day with your ridiculous antics. It's time for you. And, and I felt as though reading that, that this wasn't a Michael Avenatti taunt of pushing a fork in somebody's chest like he does. No, it was pity. It you was know, pity. Yeah, it was pity. Yeah. It was time for Rudy Giuliani to go upstate New York to a farm and play with other <laughs> mayors up there and just go away because he's nuts. He's clearly nuts. And if, again, hiring someone just to, to blurt out bullshit in all directions is what you want, you've already got that. He's the president of the United States. Yeah. You don't need a second guy doing that. Um, speaking of Friends of uh, Donald, Paul Manafort's ex-son-in-law is now under indictment because, let's face it, everyone involved in this shit is a two-bit mobster, well, he's either either literally or they want to be. Pardon me. He's cooperating. <clears throat> yes, he's cooperating. He's he's co- but that, which means that he's going to flip on Paul. Yeah. And Paul Paul he's going to go away for a long, long time. Um, Mike Pence. Remember Mike, when Mike Pence was a story? Yeah, for like eleven hours, there was an article about yeah. whether or not he was loyal to Trump. Or whether he yeah. was building his own power center because he he hired somebody this week, Corey Lewandowski, yeah, to run his pack, yeah, because hire hire a thug to run your pack. That's great. There's something about these uh, these these white haired zombie Republican guys, Pence and Hugh Hewitt, yeah. is that they do horrendous shit, and then a few hours later, it's like well, I don't remember even what happened. What what what's going on? I don't know. Um, as predicted uh, on this show and many many others. The Trump team has moved on to the collusion shmalu- collusion schmalusion phase. Everybody does it. Yeah, uh, that's the defense now. Everybody, Everybody does it. It's not a crime. I'm not for for how many months were they saying we never did it? We never did. There it. was never no happened. collusion. Never happened. Never happened. Now it's Everybody it's does. not illegal. Everybody, Everybody does, does it. it. Everyone yeah. gets Russian. Everyone has a pee tape hanging over their head. Everyone. So now you can expect to hear that talking point pouring out of your email inbox from your personal crazy Uncle Liberty any day now, because that's how this works. Well, and the cra- the other crazy Uncle Liberty talking point is uh, the deep state spied on the Trump administration. The deep spied on the it. Trump no. campaign. Called whistleblowing. You know, yeah. that there was Serpico was inside. <laughs> this is Hugh. He would yeah. actually yeah. use the word Serpico was secretly inside the Trump campaign. no. It really was somebody dropping a dime on your corrupt asses saying, you guys don't understand what's going on to to the FBI. You guys don't mm-hmm. understand what's going on inside here. It's terrible. 
they're hurting America. You've got to you've got to put somebody in here. Now that's all the politics and corrupt side and the impeachment side and all the why these people should all be in jail side. There are actual policy implications. And here's the thing. Yes, there are. Whether or not Ted Cruz or Mike Pence or or any of these other assholes were president, um, the Trump administration announced it will withhold federal funding from pl- family planning clinics that provide abortions or refer patients to places that provide them. Yeah, and they're going to get sued and that's going to get stopped. But that puts the issue that they want old white people to be freaked out about right on the front page. But that policy would have been policy no matter who got elected. Right, right. You know, if, Car- if Carly Fiorina, if old baby parts Carly Fiorina, they're taking yep. babies, having them up and selling them because that's what pl- – that's what, Baby parts, that's yeah. That's what Planned Parenthood does. <laughs> Um, if she'd been elected, the same shitty policy would have been coming out of her mouth, too. It's so Republican yeah. policies, yeah. folks. Republican and policies. This was the week that Donald Trump decided that some undocumented migrants are animals. They aren't people. Uh-huh. They're animals. And then he walked it back. But as a million people pointed out on social media, the only thing that that undercuts his, uh, his, his alibi, that he was just talking about a specific gang, is – Literally every single thing he's ever said about immigrants his entire fucking life. And also the inconvenient fact that the gang he's talking about are American citizens. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> that. There's that. Uh, Michael Cohen solicited a payment for at least a million dollars from the Qatari government to help them figure out how to suck up to Trump better. Because Michael Cohen was just making money hand over fist there for a while. Now uh, he's going to go to jail. But, you know, that was fun while it lasted, it wasn't it, Mike? Yes, I'm uh-huh. sure it was. Obama's ethics chief accused Trump of violating the emoluments clause for a Trump-branded golf course and hotel in Indonesia, partially funded by the Chinese government. You're kidding. Adam Schiff believes Trump is in violation of the emoluments clause after he said he wants to help Chinese telecommunications company ZTE get back into business. And earlier this year, the Commerce Department prohibited U.S. companies from selling to ZTE because the firm violated American sanctions on Iran. Also, the a leading military uh, telecommunications expert testified before Congress this week that he would never use a ZTE phone, that ZTE phones are essentially spy units and are completely insecure, (laughs) and he does not believe they should be sold in the United States of America. Right. Uh, Right. And Adam Schiff has a bill uh, that he has written uh, demanding that all executive branch spending at Trump properties be public information. Yeah. So uh, that that's never going to happen under a Republican uh, Congress, but you can bet things are going to change when, when the House flips. Speaking of people who never apologize, um, the White House <laughs> declined to apologize for Kelly Sadler's little jokey joke about uh, joke. John McCain dying anyway, so why worry about him? Uh, mm-hmm. they, they're not going to apologize because... Donald Trump's rule is never apologize for anything, just double, double, double down. However, they did take the bold move of canceling their daily communication meeting in response to the leak of a comment, because the leak is the real problem, Blue Gal. Not the fact that these people are just scum, but the fact that some of their scum is leaking out into the public. I'm not going to say Kelly Ann Conway is doing all the leaking, because there's probably at least four other people who are doing it. But yeah, she's just number one or number two. After Donald Trump himself, yeah. I'd like to play a little game with you, Blue Gals. Do you mind if I play sure. a little game? Go it's right called, ahead. It's called Guess Which Party? <laughs> That's my favorite game, Drew Isn't it a good game? Uh, Representative Mo Brooks from Alabama, again, not going to mention the party, uh, said the following. Every time you have that soil or rock or whatever it is that's deposited into the seas, that forces the sea levels to rise because now you have less space in the oceans because the bottom is moving up. Um, first of all, the bottom really is moving up but not of the ocean. Um, <laughs> secondly, can we guess which political yes, party I it is? I guessed already. Yep. Rocks and dirt are causing sea levels to rise and not, you know, global climate change. This is this is the man who had plans after the 2016 election to pre-impeach Hillary Clinton. You got big plans. I got big plans. And now, and of course, all impeachment his plans is were ruined. Yeah, yeah. Bad, bad man. Um, of course, the Senate Judiciary Committee, the, the, the Democrats on it, are all very clear that there really was collusion. This is this is a, a crime that is now sort of in the open. You can see it happening. Oh, and, and see- on on uh, MSNBC yesterday afternoon, uh, someone mentioned that they were at least collusion curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone on the panel, I've never seen everyone on the panel burst out laughing so hard yeah. Yeah. because it is obvious that there was collusion. Yeah. And that 
the collusion, they were disappointed there wasn't more collusion. Yeah. They, they uh, went at the to, Trump Tower meeting. Yes. They went to the they went to the House of Ill Repute. They gave the madam a lot of money. They got a room. The woman showed up. They told her what she they wanted, and she wanted to talk about timeshares. Yeah. And and so And then oh, they went, oh. oh no, I was supposed to get that thing where you do that thing to my thing. Yeah. And then Jared Kushner stomped out of the room and went off to, you know, fix the Middle East, because that's what his job yeah, is now. Sure. So sure. It, it is it is Again, it, it's it's happening right out in the open. You don't need this. Isn't a big you know, secret conspiracy. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of details and interconnected pieces and players we've never heard of or seen because Bob Mueller's thing is like you know eight months ahead of where everyone else is and they don't leak there. But it's really clear that um, if you're on board with this, you're either um, writing it out to the very end and you're, and you're hoping you know like the elevator just. It, it, the, the cable broke mm -hmm. and it's hurtling down and you're waiting for that perfect moment to jump in the air. Because that will save you. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. Well, and and the 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 real concern I think out there is that Trump supporters are going to riot. Yes, yes. And you have to set, this. This was the Hugh Hewitt debate with Charlie Sykes: was yeah. how do you sell the truth yeah. to people who don't believe in truth? Sure. They just believe in the conspiracy theories in their head and what Sean Hannity tells them. And that's and how do you sell it to that thirty percent of the American populace? And if that will not believe that Donald Trump's guilty of anything. And, and put me on that show, put Blue Gray on that show for two minutes and yeah, last. We can tell you exactly. Last the one question. The one <laughs> Why one, not to? One question they don't want yeah. to ask, which is how did they get that way? Yep. How did they get? Let's have a yep. conversation about how they got to be. They listened to Charlie Sykes's oh, radio yeah, show for did. 10 years. They, they listened to Hugh Hewitt's radio show for yeah. 10 years. That's how they got that. And now they've okay. elected an administration. Again, this is policy stuff. This isn't just politics. Right. Uh, the administration is preparing to rip migrant children out of their mother's arms and put them in what amount to internment camps as part of its deliberate effort to split up families who cross the American border. Because just saying that, I can I can barely talk. I just I can barely get the words out because this is not my country. And we've talked about this before. Yeah. But this is supposed to prevent people from crossing the border is we're going to kidnap your children and disappear them. Right. That's there are there are apparent allegedly, and this was an article at Crooks and Liars on Mother's Day, there are allegedly fifteen hundred children that ICE has no idea who their parents are or where these children are. Yeah. And this is policy. They, they are, there's, because there's no they're dividing the families is policy, but having an administrative aspect to recording where the children go and who their parents are and how you, these these women and children cross the border with no documentation of who they are right so there's no way to document okay we're going to take your child and separate you from your child while we figure out your immigration status and by the way we're also going to lie to the court and say you're ms-13 so that you don't get bail and which they did we don't have any recordings of wh where where we put your child or who you are in relationship to that child so you're screwed yeah. And, you know, the Nazis recorded who they killed, right, okay, right. and the numbers. Yeah. They wrote it down. That's how we know there was six million of them is because Germans kept records of all this shit. And they're evil and they're awful. ICE is not even competent to be that no. evil. To, they just are disappearing children. That's what they're doing. And lying to the courts about... No, we, we suspect this person is a gang member and that prevents them from getting bail or getting any redress from the court. So, like I said, my throat gets dry and I just kind of lose it at this point over this. And well, and this is this is and this is because this is government policy. This is how it's government. This is my this is my elected government behaving. Yeah, this this isn't just some asshole yeah. on Twitter who happens to be president screaming about witch hunts. This is the implementation right. yeah. of Republican Mm -hmm. in everyday life Republican policy which is racist and speaking yep. of which the u.s blocked a national security council uh a, a u.n Sec security council resolution asking for an investigation into the 58 palestinians who were killed by israeli troops in so it, during the day that we moved our yeah. embassy we decided to the holiest city and it's not just holy to no. christians it's holy to israelis it's holy to muslims it is. It, it was supposed to be the universal city for all faiths to have a neutral zone, right? To enjoy and to celebrate 
God, well, the, the point whatever. of it is to blow shit up. The point of it is to be provocative, yeah. cause things to explode, and in the confusion. And then John Bolton gets a Woody, and everybody right. gets and they rich. Loot the place. While we're busy wondering how to stop stocks. the explosions, they loot the place. That's the plan. No. War yeah. stocks. How are your war stocks and, and doing? John Bolton. Yep. Donald Trump is is huddled every night on the phone with his chief of staff, Sean Hannity, yep. where they talk about how to sell this shit to the morons who watch Fox News and vice versa. And and just as a total letdown, I don't know why this is last, but it is. Betsy DeVos scaled mm-hmm. back the Education Department investigations of for-profit colleges. Well, why right. wouldn't she? Uh, totally under the radar because so much other shit is happening. She gets to do this. Well, because a lot of her top hires are from the for-profit colleges. Sure. And so she doesn't want people investigating her corrupt friends, and now she's in a position to stop them from doing that. So, of course, she does. She's doing a Pruitt, which I'm sure Hugh Hewitt will approve of. I love you, Drew Class. I love you, Logal. We have to go now. It's going to get better. It's going to get better, folks. Hang in there with us. We're fighting back. Fists in the air. Resist. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners, this week, we have two internet kitties. They are Hans Joachim Rodelius and Dieter Mobius. And uh, they are uh, goofballs. You will love seeing them. They look, uh, Drift Class, they look like our late dear kitty, Jake. Oh. Uh, long, ha- long haired black and white kitties. They clearly love each other. Jake was uh, your cat that we brought down from Chicago, mm-hmm. uh, mother of Zeppo. And Jake was just the friendliest kitty. Yes. Uh, and lived a good long life. And uh, so it's fun to see someone who look two kitties who look like our dear late Jake, uh, who was such a sweet kitty. And these are beautiful kitties. Hans Joachim Rodelius and Dieter Mobius. Uh, like I said, a couple goofballs. Go look at them at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Next week is our letters show. So get your letters in. You can send emails or letters or whatever you want. Yes. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. If you can afford to buy a box of food to cook in your kitchen sent by FedEx, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. And by the way, we want to thank our angel nerd yes, who uh, renewed our uh, GoDaddy account for proleftpod.com through 2020 and she said no pressure <laughs> <laughs> shit no pressure i expect you to podcast through 2020 no pressure <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to podcast today blue gal i know <laughs> yes you did yes, i did both are don't lie you did both our paypal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com please share our show on facebook or twitter or any other social media you have and Thank you for doing that. And it's perfectly okay to tell a face-to-face friend that you listen to the Professional Left podcast, and they should too. We want to welcome Chris Hayes to the podcasting world. Yes. He's got yeah. three podcasts now. He's got three he's got episodes. three podcasts, three episodes up. They sound real professional too. Yeah. yeah. Good for you, well, Chris. He, he might get the Apple thing nailed the first couple of times. That's okay. It's not like he has an entire network to draw on for his research. You think? You know? <laughs> He, did he have two used laptops and some donated microphones in his living room to make a couple of cups happen? and a string? And, you know, you just work up from there, man. Just work up from there. You'll get it. Don't worry. Look, we have one thing to say to Chris Hayes. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? In a blue gal, the Internet Kitties have no plans to hear Yanni or Laurel or any other damn thing until you scoop the damn litter box. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.